Among the more interesting options that's coming up for treating possibly multiple myeloma is something called CAR-T. These are chimeric antigen receptor T cells. And back at ASCO in 2016, investigators reported that CAR T cells can have powerful activity against measurable multiple myeloma. And here at ASH, we're discussing B cell maturation antigen specific CAR T cells, or CAR BCMA for multiple myeloma. And to do so, I'm with Dr. Adam Cohen, who is an MD and uh, director of the myeloma immunotherapy area and uh, also assistant professor of hematology and oncology at Abramson Cancer Center at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. I got to say that the whole National Cancer Institute report at ASCO seemed to be the first example of CAR T cells and completely eradicating or decreasing multiple myeloma. That is pretty exciting. I absolutely agree. And so uh, their report, uh, which basically is looking at CAR T cells targeting really a new receptor on multiple myeloma cells right. called BCMA, which is a very specific target. It's expressed on plasma cells, but really not on many other cells of the body, which makes it a nice rational target for immunotherapy. And so they saw some uh, significant clinical responses in uh, their highest dose levels, uh, some of which are continuing to be durable even six or 12 months after infusion. Wow. So what are you reporting here at ASH? So uh, we are reporting the first results of our study uh, being performed at Penn. This uses a different CAR construct. There's sort of different opinions about the optimal type of construct uh, at different centers, uh, but uh, this one uh, has been developed by researchers at Penn and Novartis, and uh, after uh, showing activity in preclinical models, uh, we've decided to go forward in a phase one study in patients. These all were very heavily pretreated patients, a median of nine prior lines of therapy for their myeloma, so really not a lot of other options. Um, and the CAR T cells uh, are given in the cohort that I'll be describing just by themselves. Uh, in uh, our subsequent cohorts, we'll be giving some chemotherapy first, cyclophosphamide, which provides some lymphodepletion and helps with the expansion of the cells. But for this particular cohort, we're just looking at the cells themselves, really looking at safety and a preliminary uh, a sense of efficacy. So what are you, in terms of safety, what are you seeing? So we are seeing that uh, the majority of patients are developing what's called cytokine release syndrome. This is a, a well-known toxicity of CAR T cell therapies, where basically the cells get highly activated, release uh, cytokines into the bloodstream, which can cause uh, issues with uh, high fevers, flu-like symptoms, and in severe cases can cause hemodynamic instability, low blood pressure, tachycardia, even hypoxia. Um, so we saw that eight out of nine patients had some cytokine release syndrome. Most of these were mild, grade one and grade two, but three patients did develop severe cytokine release syndrome. Uh, this is treated with a drug called tocilizumab, which is actually a drug approved for rheumatoid arthritis that targets IL-6 receptor and has been shown to be effective at sort of dampening down this cytokine release syndrome and improving the hemodynamic parameters, but without depleting the CAR T cells. Now, in, you've only looked at nine patients so far? So far, that's what we're reporting, yes. Are you, are you finding some new things in terms of how to manage these patients? I mean, you've had a few that have had, had serious effects. Are you able to get to that earlier now? What have you learned in terms of just trying to manage this particular approach? Right. So I think it's definitely still early, and we're trying to understand this. Um, at this point, we usually use tocilizumab reactively once the patients start to, to get sick. There is a, a study, though, that's ongoing at uh, CHOP, Children's Hospital Philly, where they're giving the tocilizumab preemptively earlier on to see if that may limit the, the amount of toxicity. And so we're waiting the results of that study. Um, the other uh, toxicity that's been emerging with CAR T cells is neurotoxicity. Patients can develop anything from mild confusion and delirium all the way up to severe encephalopathy. Um, and this has been described in other CAR T cell studies. We did see this in two of our patients as well, including one patient who developed severe encephalopathy uh, with edema of the brain. And fortunately, this responded to treatment with steroids and cyclophosphamide, and the patient fully recovered. Uh, but this is a significant toxicity that we're still trying to better understand and, and, of course, try to develop ways to prevent it if we can. What's next? So at this point, uh, we are seeing some pretty exciting uh, clinical activity in a subset of patients. Our, our first patient is out about 12 months now in a stringent complete remission. It's a patient who had 11 prior lines of treatment and continued to progress through them. Um, and so we are, have completed the accrual in the first cohort. We're now moving forward to the next cohorts where we're giving the cyclophosphamide as lymphodepletion first and then give the CAR T cells. And we're hoping this will enhance the expansion and persistence of these cells and improve the overall response rate. So are you optimistic? I am actually. I, I think it's very early. Uh, 
I think CAR T cells really have been around only for five or six years in terms of clinical data and in right. multiple myeloma only for the last year. And so especially in myeloma, we're really just learning which patients are the right ones to treat and how to manage these toxicities. I, I think we will get better at doing this and we'll be able to hopefully apply this more broadly as opposed to just these highly refractory patients, but I think we're still a little bit ways away. It is exciting. I hope we can hear uh, more from you in the future as you accumulate more data and more patients. Absolutely. For uh, ASH uh, Clinical News, please check out online and in print our coverage from ASH 2016. I'm Rick McGuire.